What's up, you friggin' geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to write a quadratic function in standard form when you're given just the axis of symmetry. All right, so here it just says, write a quadratic function in standard form whose graph satisfies the given conditions. And it tells us that the axis of symmetry is at x is equal to negative five, all right? And also, in case you don't remember what standard form is, it's just this right here. So f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, all right? So this is what we want our answer to look like. Now, the axis of symmetry, as you may or may not know, runs through the vertex, right? So we can actually start off by using the vertex form of a quadratic and then just convert that to standard form. Okay, so again, we're just gonna start off with vertex form. So vertex form is this function right here. f of x is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. And here, h and k are your x and y coordinates of your vertex, okay? Now, we don't necessarily know where the vertex is, but we kind of know where it is, right? Because the axis of symmetry runs straight through the vertex. So, for example, if I just drew a little graph like this, and then I said, uh, let's say this is negative 5 right there, and I told you the axis of symmetry is at x is equal to negative 5, well, then I know the axis of symmetry is a vertical line like that, right? And the other thing we know is that the axis of symmetry runs through the vertex. So that means the vertex is somewhere along this line. So that means we know the x coordinate for the vertex, right? So the vertex is at negative five comma something, right? We don't know what this something is, but we do know what the x coordinate is, right? It's negative five. So we can plug this into our function over here for h. So simplifying this, we're going to have f of x is equal to a times x. And now, am I going to plug in negative 5? No, I'm not. I'm actually going to plug in a positive 5, okay? Whatever your x coordinate is, you basically just put the opposite over here. So since we have a negative 5 for our x, we're going to put a positive 5 over here. And then remember, this is squared, and then this is plus k, right? Or plus our y coordinate. Now, we don't know what our y coordinate is, so we can just plug in whichever one we want. And I recommend plugging in a zero because that's gonna be easy to evaluate, right? Because whenever you add or subtract zero, it doesn't change anything, okay? So we're gonna plug in a zero for k because we can. So then this is gonna be equal to a times x plus five squared, okay? And then lastly, a over here, we can also plug in whatever number we want because a is just a coefficient over here. And I recommend plugging in a one. And the reason for that is because whenever you multiply by one, your crap over here won't change, right? Nothing changes when you multiply by one. So we're gonna plug in a one for a over here. So this is gonna be equal to one times x plus five squared, okay? And now, like I said, whenever you multiply by one, it doesn't change, right? So one times x plus five squared is simply equal to x plus five squared, right? So this is all we really have to solve for now. So then this is gonna be equal to x plus five times x plus five, right? We just need to multiply it out. Now we have two binomials, and in order to multiply binomials, you just need to remember the FOIL method, which stands for first, outer, inner, last. And if you need a refresher on that, I'll link a video to that in the card above, but here I'm just gonna multiply it out. So we're going to go first, which is gonna be equal to x squared. Then we're gonna go outer, which is positive five x. And then we're gonna go inner, which is positive five x also, so plus five x. And then last is positive 25, okay? Combining like terms here, we have five x plus five x, which is 10 x. So then our final answer here for our function is going to be f of x, is equal to, let's see, x squared plus 10x plus 25, right? There's your function in standard form. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.